There are four assumptions that Greg talked about, but I will talk about three of these assumptions and how they relate to the cells and the biology. Assumption number one is that the body is a physical machine made out of parts, chemicals, and molecules, and atoms, and that's all you need to know. And this is the foundation of Newtonian physics, only studying the material. Assumption number two, genes control biological expression. And assumption number three is that Darwinian evolution provides for the biological world that we have. I will now talk about each one of these in a row and how they relate to biology. The first assumption by, about Newtonian physics. Okay, Science is like a building with many floors, and the lower floors are the foundation for the floors above. The first floor in science is mathematics. Bef before Newton could understand the planets and how they move, he had to create differential calculus. From mathematics, then we go to physics. So Newton took us from math to physics. The study of matter leads to the study of chemistry. There are different kinds of chemistry till you get to biological chemistry, biochemistry, which then leads to biology. And then from biology, we go to psychology. There's a law involved here. If a science on a lower floor changes its belief, all the other sciences above must accommodate that. So in f uh, physics, the one that we are using in medicine is Newtonian physics. And so we want to understand how the cells work. We must understand mechanisms. And mechanics equals physics. So you can say Newtonian physics, Newtonian mechanics, or quantum physics, and quantum mechanics, same thing. So before you can understand how biology works, you must understand mechanisms. That the physics that we talked about, Newtonian physics, said that the universe is a machine made out of matter. But in 1925, quantum physics said, no, the universe is made out of energy. So when we talk about energy, energy are like, oops, energy uh, is like waves in the water. That is, in fact, actually energy moving through water. So you, this is the actual shape of energy waves going through space. The question is, when two waves are coming toward each other, what happens when they meet? And the answer is, they become entangled with each other. So in this room right now, there are radio, television waves, cell phone waves, all kinds of energy in the room entangled. But matter, I can separate and study each piece, but energy waves, I cannot separate. So conventional science is reductionistic. It takes things apart and studies pieces. But the new physics says, no, you have to study wholeness because you cannot separate the energy. So when a doctor looks at a sick patient in his office, he looks at his physical body and tries to understand what's going on. But what we all know about wholeness is that what affects the patients is his job, the family, the environment, the community, so that to study illness, you can't see it just in the physical body. So this is how energy waves interact. I drop two rocks at from the, the same size rocks from the same height at the same time and they hit the water. And the waves are, the ripples are in phase and they come toward each other. The question is what happens when the waves meet? So I, this is, I will pretend by putting one wave over the top of the other way. This wave goes this way, this wave goes this way, this is overlap. And to find out what you do, you add up the waves. One plus one equals two. So the two waves interfere with each other. And the result when they're in phase is the wave is more powerful. Okay? It is called constructive interference. Okay? There is an opposite effect. This time I drop the two rocks from the same height, but I drop one before the other. And the ripples come toward each other, but they're out of phase. One wave is going up, one wave is going down. Then, so watch what happens when they meet. Add them up. Minus one, plus one, plus one, minus one. 
So two waves can interfere and cancel each other out. This is called destructive interference. You have all experienced this in your life. Constructive interference is called good vibes. And destructive interference, bad vibes. So uh, let's say it's a uh, uh, Saturday night and you have to go to a party and you're tired, tired, and you go to the party and you meet some people who are in wave harmony, and the waves are in harmony with you. And your energy and their energy in phase gives you more power. And then you are walking around with on your feet, on your toes, very high, constructive interference. Bad vibes. You are in a scary place, and you feel the energy go. <sighs> what is going on is there's energy in the field that conflicts with you, and it cancels your energy. Bad vibes. All animals and all plants communicate with vibration. The gazelle doesn't have to go up to the lion and say, are you my friend? Because at the distance, the energy could be felt and the gazelle will not go there because of bad vibes. If we were, when we were young, were taught to be sensitive to the vibrations, we would not find ourselves in bad relationships and bad places. But we are usually told not to go by our feelings, but to listen to what people have to say. Uh, one night at three o'clock in the morning, I was watching an old movie on TV. It's a British movie, so it was very dry. And I was going to go shut it off, and, a, and the one line came out that was worth staying up all night for. Language was designed to hide feelings. So the point is, all organisms communicate by, vib by vibrations and know if they're in a good place or a bad place, by reading the vibrations, but we humans uh, have that ability but are not trained to use that ability. But I will show you in a little while how vibrations change the proteins of the body. And the proteins give us our structure and our function, so the vibrations can alter our health and our biology. This is a picture of a gold atom. And while you can see it in the electron microscope, if I give you a camera to fly through the atom and take pictures from one side to the other side, when you come back and develop the pictures, there will be nothing on the pictures. And the reason is, is this is the atom that uh, Greg said, this is the, you know, the atom we studied in school. I studied and taught this atom in school. And this is the picture of the quantum atom. So the relevance is, why, if an atom is invisible, I cannot put my hand through the table? Well, this is a picture of a tornado. And I, I say, drive your car 150 kilometers per hour straight here. Will the car go through the tornado, yes or no? It would be like hitting a stone wall. The car will be smashed by hitting, hitting the tornado. And yet, you can see the tornado, so you say it's physical. But if you take the dirt and the dust out and you then drive across the field at 150 kilometers per hour right here, it would be like a clear day and then you would hit like a stone wall. And the reason is that there's a force field, a force, and you can't go through that force. And atoms are miniature tornadoes. So when we talk about the atom in a textbook, we have the nucleus and the electrons in shells. The protons are positive and the electrons are negative. And every atom has an equal number of protons and electrons. So every atom is neutral. However, the and electrons the are not equally distributed. So that on this side of the atom, it's more negative and this side more positive. So if I break a voltmeter and read here is negative, if I take the voltmeter and read here is positive. But the, instead of moving the voltmeter from negative and then move it here as positive, all atoms are spinning all the time. So as this atom is spinning, then I put a voltmeter and one side red is uh, you know, positive and negative, red and blue. 
So you are watching the, the waves of positive and negative, and I record them. And then when you look at the character of the atom, you see the character is a wave. So atoms are in physics, in today's physics, they study the electrical activity of atoms. When you and I went to school, we studied the physical character of the atom, the mass and the weight. And today, physics studies the vibration, not the, not the physical. So that uh, all atoms create waves. So that the picture of the atom is like the waves with the atom in the center. So when we want to study atoms, when you use Newtonian physics, you study two particles hitting each other like billiard balls. But in quantum physics, we don't study the particles because in quantum physics, we study the waves. And we study how the waves interact, interference. So there's constructive and destructive interference between atoms. All of the waves together is called the field. So you are made out of atoms, but you also are the field. So you are connected to everything because you can't separate waves. This is a new technology showing you pictures of atoms and electrons. And a scientist can manipulate and make a corral out of atoms. And trapped in this corral are two electrons. And you can see the waves in the electron microscope picture from the atoms. These are the waves. And then you can see where the waves of one atom and the waves of the other atom interact and in interference. So the new physics says, don't look at for particles, talk about the field and the waves. This is from Scientific American, but it's not the title I'm interested in. It's a subtitle. And the relevance is this. Are you made out of atoms and molecules, yes or no? Because if you are, then you are giving off light and energy, and you are absorbing light and energy. So while you see yourself as a physical entity, in the new physics, you are energy waves interacting with each other in the room right now. In the old days, uh, this was the only color picture in my chemistry textbook. And it's the spectrum of emission for each element in the periodic table. There are different frequencies for each atom. What's interesting is in medicine, we don't study energy. Uh, the reason is the drug companies sell chemicals, they don't sell energy. So interesting is that Every element has its own vibrational frequency. And the newest technology in medicine was designed by physicists. CAT scan, MRI, sonogram. And what's interesting is the physicists designed the machine, and what you're reading are the vibrations of the cells and the tissues, and the specific vibrations can tell you if the cells are in health or disease. But medical doctors don't understand the nature of energy. So they will use this as a map to find where a cancer is. And then use a scalpel and cut it. out the cancer. But remember, all atoms give off energy and all atoms absorb energy. And when two energies interfere, you can change the power from zero, from destructive, to increase the power constructive interference. So instead of using a scalpel to cut out a cancer, you should be able to put energy into this cancer and cause the cancer to go away. And this is the physical foundation for hands-on healing for thousands of years.